and this morning uh, with this regular segment. And uh, good morning to Tioka Dove. Uh, we want to say a uh, special good morning to Dr. Ronald Neptune, who is one of very few male pediatricians in Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to say good morning and welcome, sir. Hi, morning, Carrie. Morning, Rufus. Morning, morning, morning. I want to say good morning to the people of Tobago and by extension, Trinidad. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Tobago and Trinidad. <laughs> so, Dr. Ronell, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. All right. So, I grew up in a village called Lekato in Tobago. And um, during high school time, a group of us decided that we want to become medical doctors to improve healthcare in Tobago. Um, we journeyed to Trinidad and we went to medical school at St. Augustine, New East St. Augustine. Right. and came back to Tobago. I worked in Tobago for a few years, and then I fell in love with pediatrics and decided to do training in pediatrics. So I had to go back to Trinidad to do such. And now I would have completed that training last year, and I'm back in Tobago as a pediatrician in Tobago. And uh, you are one of very few uh, pediatricians. Why pediatrics specifically? Um, during my um, years of internship, where we had to rotate between pediatrics and adults, I realized that adult medicine is not as um, satisfying to me. The okay. reason being that with children, you can actually see the difference that you make really quickly, right? And job satisfaction means a lot to me, right? And you know, when a child is sick, they are down, um, but when they are better, they get up, they run. They don't have that feeling of um, trying to trick anybody to think that they're even um, more sick than they are. Right. right. So, you know, pediatrics really did it for me and it's actually making a difference in a child's life to actually see them grow up and actually impact the world. And what could be more noble than, you know, improving a child's life? Yeah. Now, um, did you face any challenges, you know, in your journey to become the doctor you are now? So, um, one of the biggest challenges would have been leaving um, Tobago to come to Trinidad um, because uh, not having family um, right. in Trinidad. You have no family in Trinidad? Well, most of my family, they are in South, um, right. Point Fulton in Trinidad, and school is in um, St. Augustine. Saint Augustine. Right. So not having to actually have family in Trinidad, that was a little difficult for me. Right. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, and this is me getting a little bit open with a lot of people, I failed an exam in my third year, and I had to take a year off school. And that was one of my most difficult times in medical school because, you know, we are not trained very well um, in a general public to deal with failures. Right. And, you know, just not being able to navigate my life through that time, not knowing which direction it would go in. It was a little difficult for me then, but having the support of family and friends and lecturers and teachers you know it was not as hard to deal with and i think that that year did really well for me um coming back into medical school and getting into postgrad training i didn't feel like as if that year off of school um was a hinder in my career wonderful and uh, tell us about your feature in the mention series so um when dk came to me to ask me to do that um it was a little bit you know um was wondering, should I do it, should I not do it? But then listening to him and his idea and his vision of actually featuring um, Afro-Trindagonian men um, so that we can actually change the narrative, that in itself sort of pushed me to sort of get open, get down. And it's just to give a lot of young men the inspiration to know that, hey, regardless of what journey you may be on, even if you have failures, even if you have um, obstacles, knowing how to overcome it, knowing how to deal with failures, getting good support and good mentorship is what is important to actually end up doing well in the future. And I think that this is a conversation that we really need to have. And he just started it, and I hope that it can actually get way bigger than what it is now. Sure. So your men need a lot of direction. That's right. You know, we see the need for it more and more because, yeah. um, you know, when we hear things in the news, most times it's... Uh, you know, and it's negative things. Most times it's, it's males who are the perpetrators of certain things. And, yeah, you know, uh, really having leaders in the community and uh, mentors, as you said. So how has this experience been? And, you know, what have the responses to your story been like? So a lot of people reached out to me, um, congratulated me on the journey. Um, they were also pretty happy to see that I was that open to give a lot of people the um, assurance and reassurance that, failure is okay and they can still do great things regardless. 
right? Um, also, a lot of my students that I would have had um, in medical school, they, while I was doing my training in pediatrics, I had to mentor a lot of medical students. Right. And, you know, by them seeing the story, a lot of them came to me and said, hey, I didn't know you had to go through this. And I was like, well, yes, I did. And here I am today now, I am able to at least guide you guys to let you all know that regardless of whatever the outcome is, you know, you all will be fine. Um, no matter what the journey is, you all will be fine. In terms sure. of what should happen after medical school, started talking a lot to them to pick out because again, these are things that not much people, um, not much discussion is, is being held um, around. So true, so true. If it's one thing you believe that you learn from being involved in it, what is it? Um, one great thing that I learned is don't ever be afraid to be open, right? Understand that no matter what journey in life you may take, that you really need to have a conversation about the difficult things in life. And, you know, somebody is out there waiting and willing to hear that difficult um, situation to be able to overcome it and actually learn from it and use it as their stepping stone to get to where they are. So um, that is why I was really happy to do the feature with um, DK and to do the feature with mentions. Right. And I think the, the response was really overwhelming. Such an inspiring story. And just before we go, what's next for you? So currently I'm in Tobago and this is home. This is where I love um, coming from the grassroots. You know, it's really nice being home, giving back to the pediatric population here. Um, what I also did is open a private practice. And right. this private practice is to sort of bridge the gap between um, community pediatrics and hospital pediatrics. Because now a lot of persons don't want to go to the hospital and for obvious reasons, nobody wants to get COVID or be exposed to COVID, yeah. right? So there are certain conditions that could be managed in the community. And by giving people that option to come to a community setting where they feel a lot safer, you know, that is the direction that I took um, for now. I still continue hospital work because that's, that's what I really love. So that's the direction that I'm taking for now. All right. And with that, I want to say thank you so much. It's such an inspirational story there. And I want to wish you a great morning and the rest of your day, Doctor. And uh, yeah. thank you for joining us this morning. All right. Thank you for having me and thank you for this feature. And you all are doing really well with this leader. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That was Dr. Ronald Neptune, a pedi pediatric registrar in the Scarborough General Hospital, Tobago, and uh, the pediatrician of Pedsville. All right.